Okay, I'll be talking about Apache Wicket, um, a component-oriented web framework. This is the agenda. I'm going to introduce uh, Apache Wicket a bit, uh, and I'll be talking about our upcoming release, uh, 1.5, and then I'll take some questions. First, about me. Um, I'm Martijn Dashorst. Um, I'm, I work for Tobicus, a Dutch-based company building web applications. Um, I'm the chair for Apache Wicket. That means that I'm uh, mostly sat on. Uh, people like to sit on me, uh, like the board of Apache and uh, my fellow committers. Uh, I commit sometimes to uh, the Wicket project. Uh, I'm an Apache member, and I wrote a book about the framework I'm going to talk about. The introduction. What is Apache Wicket? It's a component-oriented web framework using just Java and HTML. It's open source, otherwise I wouldn't be standing here. Um, Apache licensed, so anybody can do with it what they, whatever they want. It was created in 2004. Uh, well, I already said it's a Java web framework. It's component-oriented, and you can find it at the, the URL uh, at the bottom. So who's using Wicket? Anybody here using Wicket? Show, show of hands. Oh, not that much, many, so, okay. Um, don't, don't feel lonely. There are other people using Wicket as well. Um, AdSkill, I never heard of it. It's a German um, uh, ad company. Uh, it's in the Alexa top 2000 of uh, worldwide websites. I never heard of it, but apparently it works pretty well. Um, other websites, mobile, the, uh, Walmart, the biggest uh, American retailer in the world. Um, a dating website, something for song texts, um, a portfolio for, for uploading your, for sharing your photos. Um, if you're a woman and over 40 years old, um, there's this. Uh, Nice forum for you with uh, lots of interesting articles. Um, for the Dutch people here, um, eropuit.nl, it's a, a trip selection website. It's wicked based. Um, other Dutchies, the Marco Borsato, a very famous Dutch artist, his website is also built with wicked. Um, if you want to go to Mexico, uh, this website is built with wicked. Um, if you need to go more formal with a nice tie, you can buy them with Wicket. Um, in the late hours, you can play an online game using Wicket. Um, you can drink wine while you're playing. Um, if you run Windows, anybody runs Windows? Um, wow! <laughs> One. <laughs> um, you can buy Antivirus products with Wicket. And um, finally, if you want to go to Las Vegas, you can book your trip here. Um, but I can't tell you anything about it because when you, uh, well, everything that happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Um, a couple of quotes from our users. Uh, MobileWarmup.com supports three categories of mobile devices using the same Java code. And only the HTML is very different. You can imagine that uh, Android and iOS uh, mobile phones are pretty much in the same ballpark, but uh, Windows Mobile 6 uh, is really uh, a drag with, uh, with parsing HTML, so they need to serve different HTML for that. Um, the guys from Vegas.com, they also launched uh, Mexico.com last year, and they just reused their existing application and uh, created that uh, a whole new website for booking vacations and holidays in Mexico. They found that reuse of their code was tremendous. So when I told you that what Wicked was, it's a component-oriented web framework and uses just HTML. So let's explore that a bit. Let's take create this sign-up form. Um, I took this example from Railscast. Anybody familiar with Railscast? It's a very nice online website where someone uh, makes videos, uh, screencasts of uh, building rails, uh, small rails components, uh, usually five, ten minutes times. 
it's really nice to, to get a feel of uh, Ruby on Rails. So if you want to make this in HTML5, the form would look something like this. Um, you have an, a header, a form, within it uh, some place to get uh, feedback messages from your users, um, an email field, a password field, and a confirmation box, and a button to submit it. Using Ruby on Rails, it would look something like this. You have uh, a special tag for uh, Ruby code, um, where you have uh, for a user, you create a form, and if there are any errors, you display this part, etc. This looks a lot like JSPs. Anybody use JSPs? Ah, that's considerable people. So, do you enjoy it? <laughs> So, if you go back to the HTML, uh, if, you, if you open this up in a browser uh, from, from the file system, it doesn't look anything like the uh, sign-up form. It's completely empty, except for you see the text sign-up, and after that you don't see anything. It's completely blank, because the browser doesn't know anything about these Ruby statements. Similarly with JSPs, all this stuff that's uh, important for Java is not shown in the browser. So if you open up this uh, preview in your browser, it looks exactly like that. Now, with Wicked, we use that markup. We augment the markup with a couple of placeholder tags where we tell Wicked to do something. And if you open this up in the browser, it still looks like the same form. So, Wicked uses this idiom to instruct, to, 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 uh, to, to get at the tags, the markup that needs to be manipulated. In summary, if you have, uh, there are a couple of, there are two ways to look at your markup for building web applications. You have imperative markup, where you have code and, um, and markup intersected. And it's used a lot by Ruby on Rails, uh, JSP, Play Framework, uh, Velocity Templates. And it's great for web developers. I always hear uh, when people complain about Wicked, for, well, you can't do anything in the markup, uh, what I'm used to. So uh, there's a, definitely a lot of folks that enjoy working like this. And it gives quick results if you, if you run it. You, you can work uh, pre uh, pretty fast, you, you have a website uh, running. I find it the problem that code and markup are not separated. So conversely, we have declarative markup, and this is used by Wicked, pioneered by Tapestry, uh, and Facelets, uh, JSF framework, uh, uses this as well. But this is great for web designers. The people who mock up your web application, uh, the screens in Photoshop, uh, you can go from Photoshop to HTML, you can show that to your clients. Um, once the client says, wow, that's great, it look, it's really snappy, it feels like you're almost complete, uh, then you go and uh, create your web application from it. So you take that HTML, you put it in your Eclipse or NetBeans project, and you augment it with uh, the wicked identifiers and you start writing Java code. With Wicked, code and markup are completely separated. Ex unless, of course, you're doing JavaScript in the browser, that's, of course, uh, uh, inside your markup. But. So, just Java. If you look at the sign-up form, this is, again, the uh, Ruby on Rails template. Uh, you see a lot of code in there, and there's also a controller at the back uh, that receives the, uh, the form input. If you wanted to create something like that using Wicked, it would look something like this. Uh, first, you create a form component, uh, and a form receives an unsubmit message. And within that unsubmit, you can do your thing like saving the user, um, uh, going, b booking a trip, that kind of stuff. You add the form to the, compo uh, to the page, um, if you want to provide feedback to the, to the user, it's nice to have feedback messages shown. Um, so we create a feedback panel, that's a wicked, uh, wicked core component that displays uh, error messages. 
um, we can sell it, uh, to tell it that it should only be visible when there are feedback messages, similar to the uh, if-then-else construct in the Ruby on Rails page, and we add it to the form. Next, the fields. So we have an empty uh, email text field, we add it to it, we add a password field, and we add another confirmation password field. And that's what you need to do in Java for creating this form. So it's just Java. Okay. <laughs> now really, don't fall asleep, please. <laughs> I'll just uh, talk louder. <laughs> um, just Java, no logic in your template, in your uh, markup, just in your Java files. Uh, components are objects, so you can instantiate them using just new, or you can subclass components with extents. You can use object-oriented techniques in your programming. Um, you can create encapsulated components that uh, work on their data and uh, give events to other components, etc. And um, we did our best to minimize the number of uh, XML files you need to uh, provide with Wicket uh, exactly one, and that's mandated by the servlet specification if you're running on JEEs before number six. So, no XML. Quickly, the concepts. We have components. Uh, components manipulate markup. They render uh, content. For instance, a label uh, manipulates the mark doesn't manipulate its markup itself, but it renders the content uh, you provide it. If you have a label that should show a name, it just renders the name. Components can also re receive events, uh, like a link. If you click on a link, you get an on-click event. Wicket has models, and with models you can provide data to components. Components need to work on data. A label needs to know what it needs to display. Uh, a link that deletes a user from your database needs to know what, are the, uh, what user to delete. Models also store data for components. For instance, uh, an input field needs to store the input provided by the user, but it also needs to render the value uh, that's coming from your database. So that's uh, a two-way street. Models can also transform data. Uh, you, you can receive uh, a string for your database and transform it in, uh, into a phone number or vice versa. And uh, you can use models to retrieve your entities from the database. Examples are uh, model and uh, a property model. The last concept I wanted to introduce are behaviors. And behaviors are decorators or adapters for components. They can manipulate the markup of a component without the component uh, knowing about it. Um, they can receive events. You can uh, receive an on-click in, uh, in a behavior. You can add AJAX functionality to components that are not AJAX aware. Uh, for example, you can create a label that just increases every time it uh, 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 increases the count every time it's rendered using an AJAX self-updating timer behavior. You add it to the label, and the label will uh, continuously update itself. So, getting started. If you go to Wicket, uh, if you think oh, Wicket, it's an arcane framework, nobody knows about it, um, there's actually a, quite a community around it. Uh, we have, of course, our own project, Apache Wicket, uh, contains our core stuff, and it's all Apache licensed. Um, we have a Wicket Stuff project, which is a community uh, project where anybody can sign up and uh, publish their Wicket uh, components, libraries. Uh, there's theme for Wicket, there's YQuery and jQuery integration, uh, lag before Wicket for creating, uh, qu quickly getting started with uh, Wicket applications, Apache ISIS, domain-driven design web fr uh, framework that has a module for, uh, for Wicket. It's currently incubating in Apache. Uh, Jolira tools, that's a component library for uh, creating stateless web applications with Wicket. Uh, it's power, it, that powers mo the, the mobile website for uh, Walmart. And Visual Record uh, Wicket also uh, lots of standalone components that are not 
dependent on a particular Java framework, or a JavaScript framework. Apache Wicked projects, uh, we have core, that's the core library where all the functionality in it uh, exists to uh, make uh, your Wicked applications. Extensions contains additional components, richer components, uh, just things you don't need directly to create your own application, but most people typically use extensions as well. We have a quick start to get to running fast, uh, integrations with Spring and Juice, uh, a date picker, uh, a project to use velocity templates, markup templates in your Wicked application, uh, a small authorization and roles uh, project um, to, to create secure applications, and uh, finally the examples display almost any component in our, uh, uh, that's hosted at Apache. When I told you that Wicked stuff is community hosted, well, you can see how many projects there are. Um, this is, th these are all top level projects, there are uh, some sub, sub stuff as well. Um, there's, for example, a uh, Java EE inject, so for the dependency injection uh, JSR. So if you want to get started with Wicked, we provide a nice page, the quick start page. Uh, and you can generate a command line for Maven. Who uses Maven? Okay, quite a lot. Who enjoys it? Uh, the half about it, okay. I enjoy it most of the time. Um, so if you go to this page, you can uh, fill in uh, a couple of things, your group ID, your artifact ID, the wicked version you want to use, and you copy paste the command line. So you, run, uh, you open a DOS box or a, a, a terminal window, you paste in that command, and you really don't want to type this in. Um, you press enter, Maven does its thing, uh, starts logging uh, like crazy, and you can then run the quick start application with jetty.run. Um, you press enter, you get this nice console, and finally it says started Jetty server. You open a browser, you go to uh, localhost colon 8080, and you get presented with this nice helpful page. And from that on, moment on, you can start running uh, hacking on your wicked code. It's quite a nice project to start, uh, to start developing or to spike small stuff. If you want more, um, there is this uh, project called uh, LegUp, and they provide uh, integrations with uh, quick starts for Wicked with Spring, Juice, JDBC, GPA, Hibernate, and Scala. So if you want to learn more, um, there are a couple of books uh, in German, uh, Japanese, uh, and English. And I think there's someone trying to, port, uh, to, to translate one of the books into Portuguese. Portuguese. So if you want to learn more about these books, um, it's, uh, they are uh, at the website. Some quick examples. Um, first, Hello World, the infamous uh, example. So if you want to display the Hello World uh, text, we create some markup displaying Hello World. Uh, we want to replace the text Hello World. So first thing we do to make it wicked enabled is to add the wicked component identifier. Um, in Java code, we add the label to the page with the same component identifier and the text hello world. And voila, it renders hello world. A more complex example, not too complex. Uh, a link counter, a counter that, uh, a link that counts the number of times it's been pressed. So we create the text, we add some uh, markup to, for, so, so we have a link, we add uh, span so we can update the, uh, the text. We provide it with wicked link uh, identifier and the label with uh, another uh, identifier so that wicked knows about them. In Java code we create a page, uh, a constructor, uh, we provide it with the number of times the uh, link is clicked. Uh, we create a link. 
that when clicked increases the count. We provide it with a label um, with the ID clicks and that binds its output to uh, the clicks field using a property model. The property model provides the data for the, uh, uh, for the label. And we're done. Uh, Wicket is a nice framework for developers. Uh, there are two modes for, uh, for running your application, development and deployment. Uh, if you run in development mode, which is the default, you get this nice big red error message on uh, standard error. And uh, you shouldn't uh, deploy your applications using uh, the development mode because development mo uh, mode is particularly tuned for developers. So you get nice error pages showing huge stack traces. Uh, you get dynamic markup reloading. Uh, so if you modify your, your markup, uh, the markup gets reloaded into the uh, final page. Um, there's no caching enabled. The CSS and JavaScript are not optimized, so they're not minimized, they're not compressed. Um, it's tuned to discover mistakes, programming mistakes, mistakes early, like um, serialization errors or uh, missing components. And finally, it shows the wicked debugger uh, pr quite prominently. Conversely, if you run in deployment mode, which is uh, used for production, um, we do uh, the, our best to make the experience best for users of your application. So you have markup caching. We uh, don't check everything. Uh, we don't display uh, those huge stack traces to users. Users don't like to see uh, a null pointer exception. They just want to know there's an error, or rather they'd rather not have the error. But um, we minimize and compress JavaScript. We don't generate the wicked tags uh, in the markup. In development mode, those are visible. And the wicked uh, debug is not visible. A gratis tip, don't perf perform your performance test using uh, development mode. Once every six months, we get a message on our user list, uh, someone saying, oh boy, wicked does not perform. The first thing you ask, did you run it in development mode? Because of all the checks we do, uh, it's quite uh, uh, it's slower than usual. So, qu quick look at the Ajax uh, the debug window. So, if you have the uh, link counter page, at the bottom you see uh, a link for our debugger. Um, if you click on it, you get a nice small window, and that shows everything that happens with Ajax uh, in w in Wicket. For example, you can see what components have been transmitted using, uh, uh, using AJAX. And you can see the markup quite well. Uh, our error messages are also very nice. Uh, this is one uh, I created. Um, unable to find a component with ID count in your home page. This means you declared the uh, component in your markup, but that you did not add the component to your page, or uh, the hierarchy does not match. Really nice message. And we tell you even where in the markup the uh, offending stuff is. So, Another thing that's really nice about Wicket is that you can test your pages. Anybody writing unit tests for their user interface? Uh, not that many. Anybody writing unit tests at all? <laughs> okay. So with Wicket Tester, uh, uh, a class we, de we provide for Wicket, uh, you can uh, test your components directly. Uh, or you can query the markup. You can run your tests without starting a server, so you can just run them in your uh, JUnit runner. Um, you can test all the server-side interactions with uh, Ajax. We don't start a browser, so you can't run uh, JavaScript in a browser, but you can, you can simulate a browser connecting with your uh, page using Ajax. So it runs in your IDE using AND or in your Maven builds. And you can achieve quite high code coverage. Uh, a committer for, for a project claims he has 100% code coverage for his application. So, but he's quite anal retentive. Um, Testing uh, examples are testing Hello World. So we create a test method. Uh, we create a wicked tester class. We tell the tester to start with the Hello World page. Um, and we assert that the text 
that's displayed contains <coughs> hello world. And boom, we have 100% code coverage for our hello world page. Um, the click count test, uh, we create a method, we instantiate the tester, we tell the tester to start with our counting page. We assert that the model value of our label is zero. We start, nobody has clicked on the link yet. And we click the link and we assert that the model value is one. And there we have it, again, 100% code coverage. While Wicked Tester has some limitations, there are some extensions uh, uh, made for it. Uh, one by Ken Tong, page test. He uh, is promoting it quite well. I haven't used it yet. Uh, another framework that's quite well is uh, JDave. And it's a behavior-driven framework where you can create, create write specifications for your unit tests and um, <coughs> also for your Wicked pages. Pretty, pretty awesome library. So in summary, Wicked is widely used, uh, it's component oriented, it's a Java framework, and it's open source. Now I wanted to tell you something about what, what's coming up in our next Wicked release. First of all, we're, we have added some HTML5 support. It's not uh, the best support there is, but if, if you use a current Wicked version, um, our checks for valid markup don't work that nicely in combination with uh, uh, HTML5. Because HTML5 defines text, age, uh, email, uh, a number, a date, a search, and a URL field fields. Um, that's those nice fields you get uh, on your mobile device where you have a special keyboard for numbers or for uh, an URL or for an email. And in Wicked we check for programmer errors and pre-HTML5 there was no uh, email text field and there was no uh, search text field and there was no URL text field. So anything different from uh, hidden uh, password or text that was something that we said, well, okay, you made, an, you made a mistake in your markup. So that's, that's not very nice. So in Wicked 1.5, we provide text fields for those uh, components, and we're going to see how we can expand this using uh, uh, the validations that are, in, uh, that are available in the browser as well, uh, and uh, other stuff. But that's probably post Wicked 1.5. First we wanted to get the support out there and then do, uh, do our stuff, then, then improve it. Wicked 1.5 has been quite uh, long in development, and, but that was mostly because we tried to uh, optimize our internals or improve our internals. One of the things you'll note as a Maven user or an end user is that we split up the core library. Uh, old we just had one big jar file called wicked.jar. And in the new world, we have Wicked Requests, Util, and Core. Um, we split that up because we wanted to uh, untangle the uh, request processing. Uh, the code was quite convoluted. Everything could uh, uh, connect with anything. Uh, so we wanted to make it a nice, clean, separated uh, bunch so it would be much easier to maintain. So if you're a Maven user, um, Instead of depending on Wicked, you should depend on Wicked Core. Uh, if you depend on Wicked Extensions or Wicked uh, Spring, you'll get Wicked Core automatically. So we simplified our request cycle. Um, in Wicked one point, pre Wicked 1.5, um, decoding request handling was done in a state machine. Uh, anybody who debugged into the Wicked core, uh, internals? Mm, one, two, okay. So you'll notice the steps part and with a clause that if this number of steps you were circling was more than 10,000, then you should uh, throw an exception. Well, that's gone. Um, so debugging was interesting. Um, the pre-Wicked 1.5 request cycle was designed for flexibility. We didn't know what you wanted to do with uh, with Wicked or what were the possibilities, so we made it quite flexible. Um, 
And uh, well, it served its purpose. It, after four years of running with Wicket, uh, or five years developing Wicket applications, it took, it took on some quite engineering. Uh, a lot of bug fixes that were augmented onto it, uh, new functionality. So we uh, made it uh, quite new and improved. So the request cycle processing in 1.5 is completely rewritten. Um, probably you don't notice anything about it, except if you're going to uh, step into the code. The rendering code has been improved and simplified, and uh, URL rendering has been uh, completely rewritten and is also simplified. So previously you could, uh, URL generation was scattered around our core framework, is now in one place. One thing you might notice is if you have uh, your own custom web, uh, custom request cycle class, um, that's no longer, it, it's still a possibility, but it's better to use uh, our new feature. If you have a custom request cycle, you have to extend from a web request cycle. And that became problematic with some add-ons, like if you have a Hibernate request cycle that, that's similar to the uh, open session in view filter. So at the start of the request, you open a Hibernate session. At the end of the request, you throw your session away. Um, that collided with uh, if you wanted to have uh, another, integrate with another framework that also created its own request cycle. Because in Java, you can only extend from one uh, superclass. So there's now a request cycle listener that provides the same events as the uh, request cycle. So you have the on begin request, on end request, and on detach, and you can handle something with exceptions. So you can add them to the, uh, uh, configure them in your page, or in your application, uh, at the init. So you add a new request cycle listener, uh, new I request cycle listener, etc. One of the mo major improvements in Wicket and has been a feature request since I think 1.2 is to be able to uh, publish events and subscribe to events um, without having uh, with, with an event bus. So in 1.5, we now have a component event bus. Um, we have an interface, i event source. Those are objects that can send events. And we have event syncs that can receive events. The particip participants from a Wicked Framework perspective are components, the request cycle, the session, and the application. So let's take an event bus, uh, let's look, take a look at an example. Um, again, the uh, link counter page, but first we upgrade it to Ajax functionality. So here we have the Java code, uh, where we left it. First, we tell Wicket to output a markup ID for our uh, label. Otherwise, you can't update it using Ajax using document get element by ID. And we place the markup. Next, uh, we make the Ajax link, uh, the link an Ajax link, and it gets an uh, Ajax envelope. And to the uh, Ajax envelope, we add the uh, count label. Now, this is in, uh, currently in Wicket 1.4, the way to do Ajax. And, uh, if you wanted to do, uh, uh, make the link unaware of uh, the other components it needs to update, then you need to provide some uh, code your own. So, p event bus, it's pretty, uh, it's not that nice that you, that link needs to know which component it needs to update. If you want to add another component to your page and someone is not aware that the link should update it, well, that's that's uh, that's hard. It makes maintainable uh, makes makes code brittle and harder to maintain. So a better way is to make the label refresh itself when an AJAX request uh, passes by, and that's with the, done with the uh, uh, AJAX with the event bus. 
So here we have the uh, counter again. We have the target uh, add component, and we replace it with a send message for to send the event to the bus. Um, there are a couple of ways uh, in uh, how you can send events to the application or to all components or etc. Uh, that's done with the broadcast par parameter. And uh, next, we need to create a component that is aware of uh, uh, these events. So we create a count label class that extends label. Uh, against constructor and sets its output markup ID. And in the on event method, we do our logic. So if the event events payload is something the link of the, the label is interested in, in this case an AJAX request target, we add ourselves to the uh, AJAX request target. So now that we have an event bus, um, we can see it, it's a bit more code. You need to create your own uh, class. Your components need to become aware of the event bus. Yeah. Updating components uh, takes um, uh, is now completely de decoupled. So the components that need to be uh, that want to update themselves in the markup are decoupled from the components that you receive the events. One of the things you can do is make the event that you publish more type safe. So instead of an AJAX request target uh, as the uh, payload, you can use create an count event so that uh, only the uh, components that are interested in the count event uh, get re-rendered. And um, finally, uh, AJAX requests automatically target, create a default event uh, with the AJAX request target as payload. So in this, in this example, I didn't have to uh, need to publish the uh, AJAX update event. And this is just the surface of the stuff that uh, has been changed in Apache Wicket 1.5. Uh, there's a complete migration document where we pu publish all the APIs that have been changed, all the deprecations that have been removed, um, and lots of lots of other stuff that's, that has changed. So I wanted to ask if there are questions for me. It's really early. Uh, I don't bite. <laughs> What's the threading model behind the event bus? Are these events distributed synchronously, or is there a queuing mechanism? <coughs> what does it work? Um, the question is, uh, is there a threading model behind the event bus? Um, the event bus is, um, if you have uh, a request going into Apache Wicket, um, the uh, the, 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 for, for one user, for one request, there can only be one uh, request happening for a particular page. So you have a single thread of programming model for, for Wicket. Your components don't need to be aware that there are many threads running, unless you're doing things like uh, keeping a session in a static field, uh, like a coworker of mine did. So you have a single thread of programming model, and the event bus uh, just builds up, uh, on that. So there's no uh, thread dispatching mechanism for, for the threads. Is that? Yes. Okay. Any other questions? Um, yes. To put the run errors to compile errors, if the ID doesn't fit, I see it at runtime, not at compile time. Uh, okay. The question is: Is it possible if the um, if you make a mistake in your markup, um, you the, the, the error page I showed earlier with the message that uh, you forgot to add a component to your uh, page and. Uh, if, you, if you can make that compile time, so you can run your uh, Maven build or your compiler warnings, uh, your compiler gives you f um, error messages that you forgot something. Um, it's quite difficult to achieve that because the Wicked component model is very dynamic. You can add and replace <coughs> components at will. That said, um, I remember that in NetBeans, 
And in IntelliJ, there are plugins available, and they give red squirrely lines if there's a, uh, under an ID if it's not in available in either the markup or in the in, in the page. So there's some IDE support, but not for Eclipse. Um, and there are uh, people who have. But there's some discussion on the user list uh, about such a plugin for Maven or uh, uh, that tries to do, do, do something similar like that. Basically, what I do is just try to create a page, uh, create a unit test for every page in my, uh, my application that just instantiates the page and uh, fills the unit test. So, Any other questions? Yep. Yeah? I was wondering how, how does it combine? Because with widgets you control the, the the page flow and the dynamics from the server by uh, yeah by getting all the click events. Whereas in uh, jQuery application you control everything from within the browser. Okay. So in the beginning I I, I said that there was a, a jQuery project for integrating. Uh, uh, Wicket with uh, jQuery. The question, the yes, 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 yes. So uh, the question is, um, how uh, how does that work? How can you integrate jQuery, which is a JavaScript client-side library, with Wicket? Um, most of the time, at least in in my experience, is that you want to uh, you, you want to leverage all the uh, jQuery widgets that are available, a date picker or a nice um, uh, panel that opens and closes, accordions, etc. And most of the stuff happens at client side, and the server does not need to be involved in it. So uh, what we typically do is just generate all the components you need for your widget. Uh, for, instance, for instance, for your accordion, you have uh, five panels. You generate the five panels in your markup, and you attach the uh, accordion jQuery behavior to that uh, to that panel or to that list of uh, panels, and that does its magic. So it's it's very easy to to add jQuery uh, to add jQuery behavior to your wicked components using jQuery. It's just a couple of lines of code. And uh, some uh, events uh, uh, use the wicked event bus uh, to, to communicate. But uh, there's no uh, separate bus for jQuery events to, to, to wicked, or jQuery events to wicked. Is that enough? Okay. Uh, it's quite well documented, and the, uh, the, the code is very, very readable. Um, they also used a very nice feature of Java. You can use the dollar sign as an identifier, similar to in JavaScript. So they, they've used the dollar uh, uh, identifier for uh, using jQuery uh, uh, components. So, any other questions? I see a hand rising, but that's not. Okay. Well, then I think that's a wrap. Thank you.